Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Theological Leftovers. I am wanting to talk to you about, um, about being suspicious. Is it a good idea? What do you think? <laughs> There's a difference uh, between being suspicious about everything and being discerning in everything. At least I think there is. What do you think? Here's the case that I'd like to make for you today. We live in a culture that is suspicious. It's, it's really at the heart of everything in our culture. We're suspicious of every institution. We're suspicious of every person. We're suspicion, suspicious of the words that come out of anybody's mouth. We don't know who to trust. And here's the thing. When you have a suspicious culture... And an intellectually and spiritually lazy culture, what you end up having, I think, here's my theory, is you end up having a group of people that just learn not to trust anyone or anything that becomes very isolated and alone, even when they're around other people. And I think that describes our culture pretty well. There's a great book, and I'm not going to try to explain everything that he talks about in this book, but there's a great book I want to commend to you, if this is something of interest to you, called Postmodern Times, and it's written by Dr. Gene Edward Veith, Jr., I believe. And he talks about this, uh, what he calls a hermeneutic of suspicion. I think that's the phrase that he uses. And um, he, he recognizes how, um, as a culture, we don't trust any institutions. And, of course, it's... Um, it's a fellow Lutheran who writes this, and he's, he talks especially about our culture and how it feels about the church. And this has been going on for a long time. This has been encouraged and ingrained in us for a long time so that, for example, the institution of the church, its church is looked at by many people as something that is sinister. Even when they're in the church, they don't trust the institution of the church, where they consider themselves religious people who believe in God, but they won't be part of congregational life because they had a bad experience or experiences that seems to reinforce this idea of a conspiracy, right? Um, even language itself, and, and, and Dr. Veith is just a master at this, points out that that language no longer is used to discover truth or to reveal meaning. I'm trying to clarify so you'll understand where I'm coming from. Instead, language is looked at something that constructs meaning, right, um, in, in order to, to gain power. Um, language is nothing but an, an arm wrestling tournament in, instead of a, a common pursuit of truth. That's stuff I've talked about with you before. Um, this is where our culture is, suspicious and intellectually lazy, theologically lazy, and, and so we just isolate ourselves. We learn that we can't trust anyone. When we look at the political arena, we say, ah, they're all a bunch of crooks. It's not true. You know that's not true. Are there dishonest people in politics? <laughs> clearly, clearly. And a lot of misguided and deceived people as well. But there are people that are working hard and trying, right? There are people um, of virtue and character in the arena of politics. But, but this is what we do. And we do it with churches. We do it with, with the political arena. Um, we use this as an excuse not to engage uh, with other people. This hermeneutics of suspicion. Just be suspicious of everybody and everything rather than having um, well thought out and researched criteria by which we discern. Discernment is better because what it does is it takes a look at what somebody says and it asks the question, is that reasonable or unreasonable? Is that right or wrong? Is that true or false? And see, our culture wants to say there's no such thing as truth. They want to question whether or not there's a right or wrong, even though at the same time they're demanding certain things of you. See, they're not interested in right or wrong. They're not interested in true and false. Our culture has become um, more interested in saying whatever needs to be said in order to gain power, in order not to be, to be seen as the oppressed people, but to be a people who are in power. 
And, and this is how our culture primarily works. And so, as people who believe in an absolute truth, um, and who believe that that truth is actually what sets people free, um, what do we do? <laughs> how do we deal with a culture who doesn't, doesn't matter what we say, they're not going to believe the words that are coming out of our mouth. They only believe what comes out of their own hearts and minds. How, how do we contend with that suspicion, that kind of lazy, suspicious behavior? I think that the answer may be in this text from Paul, from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, um, starting at verse 1. Here's what Paul did. He said, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the tax that I want to put before you for your consideration, is you deal with the frustration of living in a culture that just has given up and simply refuses to believe in any certainty, in any truth, in anything. A culture that has become isolated because they don't think that they can trust anything except perhaps themselves. If you're dealing with that frustration and you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, I commend this text to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. God bless you all. God bless your week. Reminder, this weekend, 9 o'clock or so, we will um, be continuing our Bible study on the Revelation and in, um, then at 1030 is our um, celebration, the divine service. Jesus will be there as he has promised to give us the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. If you struggle with sin, death, and the devil, that's the place to be. If you're in Evansville, we hope you'll join us. God bless you all. God bless your week. See you next time.